Hey guys, I'm here today to talk to you about funnel plots. I was recently reading a book and found funnel plots to be a type of visualization that could be used and they kind of piqued my interest. So let's kind of start out with a use case for a funnel plot here. So I'm looking at the Superstore data set and I have the average profit per item per order. So if you were to look at what this calculation is right here, move that over, it is the sum of profit over the sum of the quantity. So within our Superstore data set, we know that there are records that have individual sales results for SKUs on given orders and there can be multiple quantities for a given SKU. So one record could be for four chairs. So this is truly representing our total profit, our sum of profit over our sum of quantity. And I have order ID on detail, so it's by order. To kind of understand what's going on and to say, yes, in theory, most of our profit per item per order should be similar. We might want to plot it like this, where each order ID is represented as a dot. We've got an average line on here. We've got some standard deviation bands. This first one's sort of the 95%. So this is 1.96 SD, so 95% of our data. And then 3 SD, so that 99 point whatever percent of our data. And we'd be really tempted to say, okay, any of these dots that fall outside of the line, those could be some sort of cause for concern. But I think what's maybe nagging in the back of your mind is, is it fair to put maybe an order that has two items on it in the same sort of category or, you know, look at the variance the same way as something that has maybe 13 items on it? And the answer to that is no, and that's where a funnel plot comes in. So here's a funnel plot, and what a funnel plot does, and you can kind of see it right away, is we have the quantity, the number of items per order going across the bottom, and we have the average profit per item per order. Again, I still have my order IDs as my dots. What we're doing here is we're recalculating those kind of distribution bands, if you will, but this time taking into consideration what that quantity is for a given um, order. And if you were to kind of logically think about what's going on here, this makes sense, right? We would expect that there would be more variation on an order where it had just one item in terms of what that average profit per item could be than let's say something that had, you know, 40 items on it. And this one, you know, even seems like it's falling right on that average line that's seven. So the setup for this is pretty straightforward. If you're interested about, um, you know, kind of confidence intervals or what the statistics is behind this, I encourage you to look into that a little bit more in depth. I am not a statistics guru by any mean, and I wouldn't want to lead you astray. So this is supposed to be sort of a very high level of how you could implement this. I'll say it's up to you to make sure that you have the right type of data and the right data situation to set up this view. Okay. So all you're going to do is you're going to add these um, calculations and they're all going to be the same. The only thing that's going to vary is, is one or two components. So you can see I'm taking the window average of my measure, which in this case is the average profit. So again, that's that sum of profit over the sum of the quantity. So that's my average profit per item. I am then subtracting some number of SDs, in this case, negative three times the SD, and that's the window SD of that same number and I'm dividing by the square root of that total quantity. And it's gonna recalculate, this is a table calculation, it's gonna recalculate across the entire table, so it's, we're using um, by calcul compute using order ID, and that's because of the window average in the SD. And you would just repeat that for each of your different ones. So here we are at the 95%, this is kind of funky because 95% is 1.96 SDs, it's not exactly two SDs. So it kind of depends on your statistical control model, what you want to be implementing within your organization, how you would go. Just know what you're doing and label things correctly. And then what we have set up here in the end is we can say, if we're kind of looking at our data, that there's a, you know, with 95% certainty, our, per, our profit per item per order would fall within these pink bands or with you know 99 point whatever percent certainty they would fall within there and then kind of like that inverse that if it's falling outside of that you know it's 
95% not due to chance. It's not random variation. It's not some sort of error. There could be something funky going on. So these could be data points that maybe you want to take a look at. This has a quantity of two items and it has an average profit, profit of 422. And if we were to look overall, our overall average is seven and you can see we're even way outside of range. And, and again, we only have two items here, so maybe not super great, but maybe some of these points like this one would be a good one. Why is the average profit negative 122 across 31 items when typically we're really converging on an average profit of $7 per item? So again, this is meant to be a high level overview. I will post this workbook on my Tableau public. My last kind of statistical caveat is that this works whenever you have a normal distribution. This was the kind of the best normal distribution I could find within Superstore, which is why I use it here. You can kind of see that normal bell curve and here's what it looks like. So there's the average line. The median's not too far off from the mean there and the quartiles seem pretty good. And, and likewise, the whiskers with, in reference to that inner quartile range seem to be pretty good. Enjoy.